everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Standing Room Only Podcast, episode number 86, Friday the 13th. We are a couple days late this week, we do apologize. As always, I'm Goose, always here joined with Alex Healy, the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, in this week's episode, we're going to talk about the Field of Dreams game, probably one of the most exciting baseball games we have ever watched. We're going to talk a little bit of the NBA, some tampering going on. We're going to talk about Pat Williams with the Bulls. Huge, huge summer so far. And we're also going to talk about the NFL, some key extensions, some injuries. Make sure you are following us on social media. We're SR Only Pod. We are on Twitter. We are on Instagram. You can listen to us on Spotify. We're on Apple Podcasts as well and YouTube if you want to get a look at our beautiful faces. You can follow our personal accounts. I am iGoose with four O's. As always, don't ask why. And then we have Healy as well. Got me at the Healy Six on Twitter and Instagram. Field of Dreams, first time ever. Sox, Yankees, reliving the classic from the 80s. Technically from the early 1900s. That's what the movie was based on, Shoeless Joe. Mm -hmm. Was everything and beyond my expectations. Yeah. I it was mean, like we watched a movie. Legit. The whole broadcast, I had to rewatch. You know, I actually tuned in right around the time the players were already on the field. Kevin Costner walked out from the uh, from center field, from the cornfields, and then the players followed. Mm -hmm. But they had the music yep. from the movie, from the end of the movie, when all the players came from the cornfields. And I don't know about you, I immediately had chills down my spine. Never seen the movie, but yes, I did as well. It was just like a cool experience because I've seen that clip before from the movie. Yeah. So it was just great to see them like do it as well with the players and not like be like, all right, here's the Chicago White Sox lineup leading off Tim Anderson. Then he runs out. No, it was just like the, the White Sox and the Yankees walking side by side. They all went and yeah. like took Kevin Costner's hand. Yeah, it was it was incredible. It was one of the coolest things I've ever witnessed as a baseball fan. We've seen cool things. We've seen players do cool things. We've seen records get broken. We've seen Derek Jeter tip his hat, have a game winning hit in his last game. We've seen some cool things. But for this event, the first major league game ever played, at, at least on this field in Iowa in Dry Dyersville, Iowa, Dyersville, Iowa. It was incredible. There is 8,000 fans-ish. You can hear the umpire making his calls. You can hear him say, oh, that's strike three. Oh, that's outside. Like, you're hearing everything. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, the game itself was incredible. Mm -hmm. Home runs left and right. Yeah, Jose am, Abreu, the first MLB player to hit a home run in Iowa. Which is crazy. From Cuba to Iowa, doing it big. He's going down as obviously a legend with the White Sox. Yeah, I I almost bought a ticket yesterday and drove to the game. Legit. I looked, I woke up, tickets were fourteen hundred dollars. I'm like, oh, you know, bad. I'm like, the seat, like, I'm not gonna get the value for the seat, but I was like, fourteen hundred dollars for a game like this. A game that you could tell others. This is before we even knew the results. So, like, I am having a little regret not doing it, but would have paid fourteen hundred. It was like just over three hours to drive. It's not was, far from us. It's I was not like, far. I could probably do that. I will. I was thinking about like afterwards, though. Like three hours drive there. Like you'd be tired, and then you'd watch the game, and then driving home it in pitch black dark. Like I. I don't know if I would have survived that. Yeah, but, probably no street lights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in a sense, I I really debated. I I after seeing watching the the end result of the game, it almost would be worth it because we don't know if they're gonna do this every year. They mm -hmm. they so the 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 owners of that 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 field. Apparently, they're going to leave it up for future endeavors for whatever they're mm -hmm. going to do, which is cool. Um, I mean, who knows? Who knows what they're going to do with it? But aside from that, the game itself, the game itself was was incredible. There was 
As you mentioned, Jose Abreu hit the first home run, hit a liner, and you can hear it cutting through the cornfields, which is nuts. And then on top of that, you had uh, Eloy go deep. You had the mm-hmm. Yankees. Aaron Judge go yard. Aaron Judge. Stanton, all in the ninth inning. So the Sox were winning like the Aaron whole Aaron Judge game. hit a home run early in the game, too. Oh, he did. Yeah. Yes. He did. He did, because they actually made it closer. Because so did... um. Mm-hmm. Brent Gardner hit one as well, I believe, yep. midway through the game to make it a three-run game. Yeah. And I turned it off at that point. You know, I'm sitting there watching the game with my, with my girlfriend. We're making dinner. We're watching this awesome. I'm like, you know what? The Sox bullpen is so good. Kopech came in. He shut it down. He's getting fired up, struck out whoever he was facing for the third out. I was like, I'm going to turn it off. Biggest regret of my life. Biggest regret of my life. As mm-hmm. soon as the game ended, I'm getting notifications. Sox win, crazy ending, all this stuff. I'm like, what? Turn it on. So the Sox, Liam Hendricks is obviously, arguably, one of the best closers in the game. Arguably. Except for yesterday against the Yankees. He had given up the lead. They go down one run. So he gave up three in the bottom of the ninth. Gave up four. a run, then he... Four? Yeah, because there was a oh, three yeah, they were down. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And so... The Sox go down. Go two outs the bottom. as well. Yep. There's two outs, and he, he allowed four runs. Yep. That was, I mean, that's just how the Yankees are. I mean, the Yankees are a powerhouse of a team. Mm-hmm. I mean, one through, literally one through nine, when they yep. were announcing their lineup, and I didn't know Rizzo was on the COVID list. It's funny that my girlfriend knows Rizzo's on the team too, because she's not, you know, she's like, oh, isn't Rizzo on this team or Brian? I'm like, yeah, it's, 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 I was like, it's Rizzo, you're right. And uh, that's when they, uh, Joe Buck, I think, was like, yeah, he's on the, the COVID list. I'm like, man, their team is still filthy. Like, they have power. Mm-hmm. Liam Hendricks got interviewed in like the fifth inning too. Yeah. And he, he, they were asking him about the Yankees. And he was basically like, they are the Monstars. Like, they're just a powerhouse hitting team like he wasn't like oh yeah they're they're just okay like i i'll do fine i'm good like he's like no they got guys that can hit throughout their whole lineup he didn't hold back at all and he kind of like joked about he's like i just hope i'm not the first pitcher to allow a home run in iowa yeah and it's funny because first he's the first blown save in iowa he was it was yeah he gave up and got the dub runs he did get the win. He did. But I mean, <laughs> he, just, he just wanted the win. The more wins you have as a closer, you got to go to that blown save ca- uh, stat. But he, um, yeah, I mean, gave up the two big hits. He, you know, he walked Gallo. And then I think it was Stanton at that point hit, hit that uh, game. Mammoth home run. shot. Oh, Dude, my. That was, those, that, yeah, the Monstars is, is, is being polite. Because that team is very, very powerful. Um, and then, you know, the Sox came up in the bottom of the ninth. Started off. Uh, they made Danny defensive Mend- replacements. A bunch. Because they thought they were going to win. And it almost came back to bite them. Yeah. You're talking about the Yankees? Uh, no, the White Sox. Because they, oh, the e- yeah. they took out Eloy. Yep. They threw in Danny Mendick for... I can't remember who. They brought in uh, Brian Goodwin. Yeah. Well, he pinched. He he was a pinch runner in the in the eighth inning. But I mean, when you're up three runs, you would think there's no way. Mm-hmm. But it happened, and that's that's where the excitement of this game came in. Because even the energy with with only eight thousand fans, the energy was there throughout. I mean, it was all Yankees and Sox fans. You gotta love it, and. When they took the lead, you know, Zavaya, the, the catcher, or Zavala, I'm sorry. He had a home run, too. Yeah, he won early in the game. It's funny because I think that was his fourth home run. Yeah. And the only time he's ever hit a home run, he had a three-home run game. In his first which career game. In his first career game. So, so he, gets, he comes in, he gets walked with one out. And the very next batter, Tim Anderson, arguably the best Sox player, some people like debate yes, some people will debate no. I think collectively they are great. He smacked a walk-off home run. Classic finish. 
bat drop, everything about it was just perfect. It was badass. Like everything that you can ask for out of this game, plus that, that's the cherry on top, especially for us Sox fans. I had to watch that about 10 times because I didn't watch it live. If that doesn't spark momentum moving forward for the next two months into the uh, playoff baseball, I don't know what will. But arguably the most fun I had watching a baseball game in a long time. Not saying I don't have fun watching baseball games. I love baseball. But this whole setup from the Kevin Costner to the music from the movie, the the narration by, um, I can't even remember his name. He's from the movie too. Mm Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was a Fox, um, you know, it was, it was, you know, Fox, live on Fox, I should say. They had Joe Buck, John Schmoltz, I believe, was also announced in the game. Mm-hmm. Legend right there with Atlanta. Uh, it, it was awesome. I mean, it was, it was, to me, was 11 out of 10. And I hope that they do it again yearly. I hope it's an annual thing that they do. I'm not sure if it will be. Yeah. But I think. That this was, it's like those pop up bars you can go to, right? For mm-hmm. cool movies. This was like that for me. That's how I felt watching it. Mm-hmm. I felt like I needed to be there. It was so cool. The walk off, like just icing, cherry on top, the icing on the cake was that icing walk on off. The cake. Like the yeah. theatrics at the end. I saw it today. This was like one of the most watched games within like the past 20 years or something like mm-hmm. that, 16. Like yeah, crazy how many people were actually tuned into that game to watch it. You said it might be you'd like to see it more in the future. Apparently, David Ross said in a press conference, like he hinted at the Cubs doing it like next year. But I looking mean, at looking at the schedule for the Cubs, though, it doesn't make sense because at what they're doing, Sox, the Yankees played Thursday night. They took the day off because they have to travel to Chicago then. And then they play Saturday, Sunday. There's just mm-hmm. not enough. There, There isn't a break in that schedule for me to think that like that they are. Also, the Cubs would be a weird team to just pick out because the Field of Dreams movie was about Shoeless Joe who played yeah. for the White Sox. So I feel like you the, have to have the Sox play. Yeah. I, the movie originally was titled Shoeless Joe before they went back and yep. changed the title too. So, and if you guys don't know the story of Shoeless Joe Jackson, there is a reason why they call him Shoeless Joe, for one, and why he is a prolific character, person, pioneer in Major League Baseball. Obviously was suspended along with other players with the Black Sox scandal for quote-unquote gambling and cheating, which numbers don't lie, just like Pete Rose, the numbers don't lie. Look him up. I read books on Shoeless Joe as a kid growing up. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of cool stuff about that. And if you haven't watched the movie, watch Healy. I actually recommend it. That's one of my favorite. I mean, he goes to Fenway. He goes to like different parts, and like you're like looking and you're watching this movie in the '80s, and you see how people are in the '80s and how they talk about baseball, and and how they talk about how baseball's always been the constant, like in the country, how everybody always has a love for baseball for however long mm-hmm. it's been around. So, I don't know, it's such a good feel movie. But, again, I grew up watching, like, all the old movies. Like, you yeah. know, Angels in the Outfield and all that. So, definitely a good one. Definitely a good segment there. Um, besides that, there really hasn't been much baseball. We are still, it's second week of August. Trade deadline's done. Mm-hmm. The Cubs <sighs> suck. Cubs suck. They are yeah. just so bad. It's it, What's crazy is at the beginning of the year, Finally, the Cubs Sox are playing their series. At the beginning of the year, we're like, ooh, this could be good. They could be both in playoff contention. Like, this is going to be a good matchup. Cubs traded everyone. That series was just garbage. Craig Kimbrell allowed a home run, like, made one of the games interesting, but the other games weren't. The Cubs got stomped against the Brewers. The Brewers scored, like, 40 runs against them in a series, and the Cubs scored, like, seven. Cubs were up four. They were up four to one tonight before they allowed 11 runs in the bottom of the second inning. And they are currently losing 14 to four in that Miami. That is horrible. It's just not good at all. I, 
I'll go to a couple more games. I definitely want to see Justin Steele pitch. He's my guy. He just got his first career start. Took the L, unfortunately, but he looked good. He had seven straight ground ball outs to start the game against the Brewers. Nice. Hermesio, who we've had on the podcast, he's going to get called up at some point. He's finally off the IL, so whenever a spot frees up, should be good to go on the main roster. And then the Giants come to town next next month. So we, I'm going to go see Chris Bryant come back to Chicago. Anthony Rizzo is supposed to come back this weekend. His foundation bought a bunch of tickets, too. They're like, hey, we didn't give him a good send-off. Like, here's a bunch of tickets. It was Section 153. The tickets were 40 bucks against the Yankee. He was great. Unfortunately, though, Anthony Rizzo got COVID, so he's unavailable for this series. Can't give him a good send-off. Yeah, so Cubs baseball, not fun. (laughs) We'll be talking about the Sox a lot coming up. Uh, The only other news we really have is Ramon Laureano got suspended 80 games for PED, which the Athletics, really happy that they went out and got Starling Marte. Really are. Because Starling Marte is a beast. Former yep. PED user, as we know. He got suspended once in his career. But, like, they weren't expecting Loriano to get suspended. It was, he was supposed to be part of that outfield. So now that trade where they gave away Lozardo is pretty much just a, a wash. At this point, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, the, the funny thing is... Ramon Laureano was like, yeah, I have a strict diet. I don't know how this got in there. Like, I'm always watching stuff. Sad about it. Like, people don't realize how easy it is to, like, get away with this shit. Like, it wasn't just accidentally in there. You got caught. You got caught. Every time someone gets caught with, uh, like, PDs, they're like, oh, I didn't know. Like, it's so unfortunate. Like, it was just in, in my special, supplements. Yeah, it's in the special meat I get. Didn't Canelo get caught and he was like, yeah, I've been eating this different meat or something. And he's like, yeah, that's mm-hmm. it, it raised the level of whatever and it caused yeah. a, a false positive. And it's like, nah. Yeah, or they're uh-huh. always like, I take supplements. And I got it from the, the jewel. Like, I, I went and got, like, a tub of fucking pre-workout you have to know what's in that though as a pro Mm -hmm. athlete as me i can go i can go you know take fit uh, Mm -hmm. whatever pre-workout i want to work out i'm I'm not getting paid millions of dollars i don't care these guys need i mean there's the reason why they make what they do and why they have those resources if you have to go through the team there's i'm sure there's guys that can go through on the team yeah maybe you know maybe somebody was just he was the mm-hmm. one that got caught. Maybe there's more. Who knows? I mean, yeah. obviously, it's going to continue to happen. We've seen it with Robinson Cano, and it's like, how many times are you going to get caught before you, you can't do it anymore, mm-hmm. you know? Exactly. And then the final baseball news, which I just remembered, Chris Davis announced his retirement. Like, it, it's it's about time. It's a few years too late. It's just an unfortunate situation him and the Orioles were in. Mm -hmm. He hit a bunch of home runs way back in the day. He got paid for it. He did also get suspended back in the day because he had Adderall for ADHD. But playing major leagues, you can't have it no matter what. Can't even have it prescribed to you. And then he was just not great. He put up a negative 5.9 war over the past few seasons. And he still was going to get paid up until next year too so he's pretty much just been sitting on the roster with getting paid millions of dollars to be terrible it's just i feel for him like he didn't put up the best numbers but he was like in that situation where the orioles couldn't be like all right we'll send you to triple a they couldn't really do that he like their team was also so bad like he had to be on the roster And it got to a point finally where he's had this injury, which I believe is keeping him out for the rest of the year. And he was able to retire and the Orioles are still going to pay off his contract. 
So that's got a, that, that that's good there. That contract, I remember. Mm-hmm. Didn't he, didn't he sign like a ten year deal like a while back, nine years ago or something like that? It, it was, was like an eight year deal. It was an eight year, I think one hundred fifty three million. Seven year one sixty one. I could not hit the amount of home runs that he hits, but I can definitely match his average for sure. I would, I would accept that. I would gladly accept 5% of what he makes. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's crazy. That's cra- it's crazy how that works, though, because you get a guy who, because at one point, he was actually good. Yeah, he, he had 53 really homers, and then he had a 47 home run season. And then even his first year of his contract, he had 38 home runs. And then 2017, he had 26, and then 2018, 16, and... Nine or twelve zero this year. Well, two hundred ninety-five home runs in his career. That's not bad, considering he really didn't hit the baseball. He struck out a lot, right? He had like a horrible strikeout to contact ratio. Yeah, he led the league in strikeouts a couple years. Yeah. Two hundred nine, two hundred eight. Is eighteen. 1,800 strikeouts in his career. I could probably look up here <laughs> how many. So in a career, the most strikeouts ever. Reggie Jackson with 25, almost 2,600. Mm. Chris Davis is 17th all time. And the dude played 13 years. 13 in quotations. He played 80 games in 2008, 45 in 2010, 59 in 2011. He played 16 this year or last year. He didn't even play a game this year. <laughs> and he's 17th all time. That's crazy Insane. to think that he misses that many games and he's that bad. Well, you know what? What do they say? There's there's people who uh what are they calling it? Oh, I forgot what it is. Trending on Twitter. There's there's players making all this money that don't really play or aren't performing. Like John Wall apparently is one of them. Chris Davis is is about as good of a of a bank robber as it as it gets uh, as far as athletes go. Um, but that's gonna do it for baseball. NBA. NBA. We got not really a whole lot of news. The trades are official now that the time has passed. Some tampering cases have been opened up Mm -hmm. by the NBA. They're going to look into potential tampering with the Lonzo Ball trade, um, which and Kyle Lowry and Kyle Lowry with the Heat. Uh, What's good is it's gone through. There was a case where this might not have gone through. Like last year, we saw with Bogdan. Bogdan didn't go through, and he's and they declined it. What what team was Bogdan supposed to go to the originally? Bucks. The Bucks. Oh man, can you imagine that? I like him in Atlanta though. But with the Bucks would be nuts. Mm-hmm. You can literally run Drew Holiday, Bogdan, Chris Middleton, Giannis. I don't think you would have needed PJ Tucker on the floor then. No, you wouldn't, because you have four and five is Giannis and maybe Brooke Lopez. Brooke Lopez is a great offensive rebounder as it is. Yeah. And, and then Bogdan plays well. Yeah. He, yeah. Oh yeah. He's going to run the two or the three. And then obviously your bench. I like him in Atlanta though. We'll talk about that as the season gets close. We do have a couple of months before the regular season does come mm-hmm. around. Summer league is happening. But, Pat Williams. Uh, with the tampering though, I, I expect some picks to be taken. The Bucks got like a second rounder taken. And, like, with tampering, I think they needed to, like, get rid of these rules. But, like, they were, teams were legitimately not supposed to have contact with any free agent players or players of other organizations until the time came. But you saw all these tweets from reporters like, oh, like, Miami's expected to get Kyle Lowry as soon as the deadline goes live. Oh, the Bulls are interested in Lonzo Ball. As soon as, like, the, I don't think the there's anything passes. wrong with that. I think if, if I'm, if I'm, so, so for me, if I'm, there's got to be a whistleblower. Somebody's got to mm-hmm. be blowing the whistle, right? Because if I'm the Bulls, I can say that 
we are looking at Lonzo Ball. Now, if I can't make direct contact with him, I assume that's his agent as well or anybody mm-hmm. that he's associated with. But does that mean you can't talk to the other team as well? I wonder how that works. Like, am I not allowed to discuss, hey, sign, sign and, and trade? trade. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't think so. I think they're, it's so weird. Like, Major League Baseball, as soon as the season's over, boom. Your contract, if you're a free agent, is done. You are no longer with that team. Like That's the, it. Yeah. the NBA, like even after the draft, like they're still technically not free agents. I think as soon as mm-hmm. the season's over, they should be free agents. And like, I agree. Under their own rules. Maybe they have maybe this... unrestricted. Maybe for restricted and I don't know. It's still weird. I think as a free agent, regardless, restricted, un unrestricted, you should be You should be able to talk to other teams as soon yeah. as the season ends. But Obviously, basketball is a little weird. You have to do it in their little bubble. Window. They have their time frame for this. They have their window for that. And, and it's fine. I mean, I, I, love, I love the drama around it. I love the ex- – I mean, this was the most exciting offseason I've had as an NBA fan, obviously, because of the Bulls. Um, but I think tampering is going to get brushed under the rug. It's more than that. The, the executives or the general manager can face suspension. There's mm-hmm. a huge fine like 10 million or something crazy. So, but again, it, they, it's, they have to prove it. They have to prove it. I don't think that they really have much in this case, but you never know. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, but the trades went through, which is the most important. So the Bulls still obviously get to keep Lonzo Ball. Kyle Lowry to Miami is big time. I think that's big. And, you know, I, I haven't been the biggest fan of him thinking he makes that much of a difference with Toronto. Because personally, I think he's been carried by DeMar DeRozan and Kawhi Leonard and Pascal Siakam and some other guys. But I think him going to Miami is a huge move for Miami, just like Lonzo potentially maybe for the Bulls. But aside from that, something we were talking about before the episode for the Bulls, I don't think it's going to be a matter of Lonzo, DeMar DeRozan. They're going to perform. I think the biggest X factor is... That we are going to see is our first round pick from last year. Patrick Williams, the paw, is having a crazy good summer so far in the summer league. He's averaging mm-hmm. over 20 points. He had a 30 point over 30. He dropped 30 points yeah. a couple of games ago. He's 4-7 for 3. Yeah. This is a guy that we were like coming out like out of Florida State. They were like, yeah, he can shoot, but he's not like mm-hmm. a he's, threat. He's had the athleticism. The athleticism, the defense. I hate comparisons, but they did compare him to Kawhi, and you can somewhat see it with him. He's, I feel like he's got the same IQ. I think mm-hmm. that's the biggest thing is he's built, he's about the same size as Kawhi, and apparently he's got really big hands also. And, his, and he's a defensive-minded player, Kawhi. But Kawhi, you never really saw the crazy offense. You didn't even see it really in the finals against LeBron in the Heat. You saw his defense. You saw some offense, but it wasn't until later, until like maybe the, the Raptors. year that he, the, yeah, the year that he wanted to leave San Antonio, where he was quote unquote hurt, which obviously they don't know if that was false reporting or not. But when he went to the Raptors, he went off. He exploded. They ended up winning the finals. He had the game winning buzzer, game seven against Philadelphia, the shot by the claw, and. All I keep thinking is Pat Williams just turned 19 years old. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe he's about to turn 20. He's still developing. He's dominating the summer league. And so I, I've been on Twitter, and everything I've been saying is Pat Williams is the X factor. If Pat Williams does end up being that defensive force and plays the four, which he's probably going to end up playing the four, he's 6'9". Six, 6'9", nine. Six, nine, a lot of guys are playing the four. I think that the Bulls are actually a top four. I said it originally because I'm like, the East sucks. The East is never really that good, but the East is really good now. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that the Bulls are a top four. As long as Pat Williams is allowed to do Pat Williams things. I think they're at the bottom portion of that top four, but I I could see them contending quite a bit. Something that came out today was like points bet. Dot com. They came out with over under for wins, and the Bulls was thirty nine. 
Yeah, 39 and a half. I'm selling all of my Dogecoin, and I am going over all day. 82-game season? It's full yeah. season. Yeah. There's no way. They just won 35 games or something. There's no way they add this, a full season with Vucevic, a healthy Levine who's coming off an Olympic gold medal. How many games did they win last year? 34 games, I think. Uh, they played 72, so we're going to – I'll take a look here. Zach Levine, I am expecting him to be a superstar by the end of the year, especially after playing in Japan. His – he's going to be a, a good – he's going to be good on the defensive end. They went 31-41 and 41 last year. 31 games, and they still had another, another 10 to play. Levine had COVID. Vucevic wasn't there. The team was just in shambles at points. They blew mm -hmm. so many fourth quarters. Levine, actually Durant said Levine is one of the guys that he thinks is a superstar, will be a superstar. So I'm expecting big things. You, you bring talent in, you only want to play better. Yeah. So. Especially on the defensive end. That, oh, man, I'm ready for I'm ready for basketball season. Now it's getting me excited for 2K, which is around the corner. <laughs> Less than a month, September Less than 10th. a month. Yes. So not a whole lot of news in the NBA, but we will continue to fill you guys in. We'll probably do a, a topic going uh, in the next week or two um, outside of just your typical sports news. Sometimes we like to do random stuff. And I think we got a, we got a window for that. Uh, like yeah. we've done with best your favorite Chicago athletes. We've done that before. So we'll definitely uh, have, a, have a special episode for that. In the NFL, not a whole lot of news yet besides – Carson Wentz did undergo a foot, foot surgery. They said he was going to miss potentially the first couple of weeks of the season. Yeah, like five and, weeks or so. Yeah, crazy. and now the more recent news, they think he's going to be ready by opening season or opening game, which is huge because that puts him ahead by like three weeks. Yeah. Obviously, he's not old. He's very, I don't want to say he's young. He's middle-aged as far as the NFL age goes. It's huge for them because they are a very talented football team. Jonathan Taylor's coming into his second year, arguably one of the best backs already. They competed last year, uh, obviously against Tennessee, and the rest of the division is really good. And they just traded I, for this guy. They just traded for him. They just extended um, the, was the linebacker, uh, Darius, Darius Leonard, Leonard, one of the best defensive linebackers in the game. So I... I think that they have a lot of good things going on. And the fact that he is, even if he misses week one, it's still huge because now he's not missing an extended amount. Now they don't have to get mm -hmm. there and scramble and try to get, try to convince Andrew Luck to come out of retirement or something. So if we didn't get the news that he was coming back and we recorded the podcast before then, I was going to go on like a rant how I am glad that the bears did not go out and trade for him. Cause I remember at the time I'm like, it would be cool for the Bears to get him, I believe. Yeah. Carson Wentz has we promise. Had, He's not a bad quarterback. Yeah, because like He's we had like a podcast at some point where we were talking about him maybe going to Chicago. I just think the the amount they gave up at the time, like even before we knew the actual trade, what we were hearing with how many first round picks and whatnot, I was like, you know, I don't think I want it. They I think it worked out well by getting uh, fields. I think fields, them trading up, giving up what they did, which was a little bit, but not a whole lot. No, I think it was good. I think it was you great. So much more upside with field. You get an athletic guy, a guy who isn't as injury prone because Carson Wentz past few years not been able to sit on the or get on the field, and you have so much more upside with fields. Like you know where Wentz is at at the moment. You know his peak. Fields, I don't know. We could unleash the next reign of terror in the NFC North the next 15 years. I mean, the, his size, athleticism, his arm, he's looking good so far in camp. Drawn some sort of comparisons to Russell Wilson, which is, mm -hmm. I think, incredible because Russell has arguably been top five quarterback for the last 10, 12 years. Like, so, I want to watch tomorrow's preseason game. You know they he's going to get. They play in Miami. Uh, and Andy Dalton's playing the first half and then Justin Fields is playing after halftime and maybe even into the fourth quarter. That's big. You're going to see 
some good things from him, especially against Miami. That's a fun, that's another upcoming team right there. That's he will be going up team. against like second string, third string guys, but still, still first NFL action. You got, I mean, it's it's worth noting that he's going against NFL players for the first time in his career, even if they're second string, to see how he performs because you know for a fact he's going to have pregame jitters going into the whole game. Mm-hmm. As soon as halftime hits, he's going to get the pregame jitters in halftime. But I think he's going to come ball out. I, I'm, I'm actually, as a Packer fan, I'm excited to see what he brings to the table for Chicago um, just because of his athletic ability. I mean, he's could potentially... We'll see. I don't want to speak too much on it, but mm-hmm. his ceiling's very high. Very high ceiling. Yeah, next next episode, we're actually going to be talking about the preseason games, which will be cool. We'll be able to talk about Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Justin Jordan Fields. Love. Jordan, Jordan Love hasn't thrown a football, and this is his first time throwing a football as well. <laughs> they, there was no preseason last year. Oh, yeah. This is his first game. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, that's what they've been talking. He's been he's been saying. Who's their I've backup last year? It was Rogers, Jordan Love, maybe Kaiser. I don't even know. Because you would think a second string guy would come out on the field at some point. Maybe he took a knee at some point. He came out. Oh, well, he came in for yeah. He no, I think he took a knee in a couple of games, but he mm-hmm. never actually suited up he's never started for a fact okay and they didn't have preseason so it's going to be interesting i'm excited to see what jordan love does and i think the whole a lot of teams are going to be watching this because if he ends up being pretty solid solid enough that's going to put eyeballs on rogers now by other nfl franchises Mm -hmm. because that i mean we've seen what green bay does I think they're going to, I mean, they don't have a choice. Rogers, you know, reconstructed the one-year deal. So we'll see. Speaking of quarterbacks, uh, in our last topic of discussion, Josh Allen got paid. Yeah, he did. He, he got a paid a lot of money. And before the, we, we recorded, we talked about this a little bit. But, like... I am kind of on the end, like, why did they do this now? They could have waited a couple of years to like so he could prove like he is legit the man. I'm on the end it's of tough. like I, I don't know why they just didn't wait. I agree with you. I do agree, considering Buffalo's defense has kind of been very good the last I don't know how many years, and they've gotten close even before Josh Allen. I just think He's got the tangibles. I, I just look at the, the highest paid quarterbacks, aside from Pat Mahomes. Dak Prescott was like the second highest paid. And Dak Prescott, I mean, was having a good year, but he's also got super talent around him. Josh Allen's got Stephon Diggs, Cole Beasley, some others, John Brown maybe. I don't even know if he's still there. But he's, he's a very talented guy to have. In the long run, he's somebody you want to keep around. Because what if he ends up being better for some reason and leading them to two Super Bowls to Pat Mahomes, who might only lead the Chiefs to one Super Bowl victory, which Mm -hmm. obviously is probably not likely. I think it's a good bet. I think it's a very good bet. Makes him the second highest paid quarterback. Eventually, there's going to be a higher paid quarterback than him. That's just the way money works. The further we get put, you know, push out. Um, and I mean, he's, he, last year was a very good year. The year before that was okay. I think that was the second year at that point, second year starting third year went great. Fourth year, I believe is what's up upcoming. I think that he's going to lead the bills to the playoffs. And I think that they will be able to compete. I don't know at what level with the chiefs, but I do still think that they are the AFC East favorite. Apparently mm-hmm. the the Patriots are a favorite right now, which could very well be. But Patriots, Dolphins, Bills. I, I'm going to take the Bills. When we give our prediction, that might change though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe it's just they are playing like the risk game. Like if he plays well, this is a steal of a contract. If he doesn't, then let's just say he gets hurt or like he does regress at some point. At that point in that contract, 
you're going to be probably in a rebuild phase trying to find a quarterback. And by the time you actually get one who's like really good again, the contract would be. And, That's just and, how it goes it, in the yeah. NFL. Like the transition between finding quarterback guys and like them actually being good, it takes a few years. We're seeing that with Burrow. It's going to take him a couple years to get adjusted to the league. Baker Mayfield, another one. Don't really have that transition of like Brett Favre just stepping down and all of a sudden Aaron Rodgers is just a monster. Exactly. But I mean, even then, those guys don't get a contract right away usually. Yeah. Usually after a couple of years. So I think they'll be okay. I think I think it's a really good gamble and for you know making two hundred and whatever eighty million compared to five hundred million that the Chiefs are gonna give Pat Mahomes obviously over a longer term. Uh, I think it's a good I think it's a really good deal. I think it's a very good deal and it's it 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 goes to show, I mean, you gotta pay these quarterbacks. Not every quarterback is good. You gotta pay them. Uh now I hope it doesn't affect their bring in other talented players to help kind of win a Super Bowl. But I mean, I, you know, they, they still have the talent right now. With that though, I think we're going to wrap it up for this week's episode. That is it. Make sure you guys tune in. Make sure you guys are listening, downloading, follow us on social media, SR only pod, Twitter, instagram stay social with us let's talk sports talk crap about chicago we'll talk crap about new york or whatever team you're a fan of if you are listening to us make sure you tune in next week we will have some more updates we'll be talking preseason we'll be talking nba as it rolls around